What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants update video. And today's vid is going to be specifically on the offensive line and guard position. Of course, yesterday, David DeCastro was released by the Pittsburgh Steelers, a guard that went at his peak, was one of the best in the NFL, a top five guard in the NFL, and was part of a Pittsburgh line for many years in the 2010s that was a really good, great Pittsburgh line, one that also won the top in the NFL. He was seemingly replaced by the offensive guard us as Giants fans were looking at to potentially sign in Trey Turner, um, who was originally a Dave Gellman guy, and he was with the Chargers, I think, for a year or maybe two maybe for a year but Trey Turner is also currently a really good guard in the NFL and he then signed with the Steelers now the way that things look right now is is it looks as if Trey Turner did immediately replace the Castro and basically it's one less guy on the market for the Giants to take in and first of all let's quickly cover what is the situation with the guard position the offensive line in general with the Giants they are going to take a chance it seems with their young guys, with their second year players. Um, remember now in 2020, they essentially drafted an entire offensive line. At center, they have Nick Gates, who's probably gonna be the most consistent and currently the most solid guy on that roster. Like you know what you're gonna get from him week in, week out, and he really doesn't have too much to improve upon. Just a little couple snapping issues, but Nick Gates, after starting at center for the first time last year, did a good enough job, and I expect him to improve with another year under his belt, with another offseason under his belt. You know, then at left guard, you have Will Hernandez, who I think is gonna be the most tenured guy on the line in terms of age and time with the Giants. This is gonna be Will's fourth year now. After a great rookie season, he kind of regressed in the following two seasons. Hopefully, he could kind of recover a little bit of what he had in that rookie year. Maybe working next to a good left tackle and a good center will help him out. Speaking of which, the left tackle of choice is Andrew Thomas, fourth overall pick, who I completely expect to take a step forward because of the fact that he was playing on one leg last year, because of the fact that he had like three different coaches in his year last year. There's, a, there's quite a bit. Um, as to why Andrew Thomas didn't have the rookie year a lot of people expected it I did make a whole video on that make sure you guys go and check that out a couple months ago He's gonna take a step forward right guard is Shane Lemieux Which is the most uncertain part right now also a second year player like Thomas is Shane Lemieux Kind of similar to will in the sense that he's better at his run blocking than his pass blocking The part where he's dissimilar in will is that he's absolutely terrible in his pass blocking the guy can't do it to save his life and that's the main concern right now can he improve enough in it for it to be a good offensive line this season that's what we're waiting to see and then right tackle is matt parrot a guy who was kind of a project player the giants took also second year player but he's an absolute monster in size and he shows flashes of potential so really there are kind of concerns all over the place because of how young the line is and how many chances the giants coaching staff is taking on these guys to gel together and develop However, the biggest one by far is that right guard position, which is why we were looking at guys like Trey Turner, why the fact that David Castro is now released, Giants fans are also looking at him. One thing we should not forget is that we do have Zach Fulton, and I will come right out and say it, I'm not the biggest fan of Zach Fulton. I think Fulton is literally just a version of Cam Fleming what the Giants had last year. And to be fair, Cam Fleming wasn't terrible for us. The only reason we as Giants fans didn't like him that much is because with Cam Fleming on the field, it usually meant that Matt Parrott was off the field. But Cam Fleming was a really good swing tackle for us. I think Zach Fulton could be a really good rotational guard for us. And I do think he probably gets to start week one. Um, Don't be surprised if Fulton gets to start week one and then Shane Lemieux is worked in again. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, I wouldn't be too mad about it. Fulton is an all right guard. You know, average, maybe a little bit below average. Once again, not what I want, which is why the reason I'm not too happy with assigning him. But average guard. And, and we'll see how he goes. But with David DeCastro now, this is why, these are the reasons I, in particular, don't like him. And I, I don't mean I don't like him when he's not as, when he's at his peak. Because once again, he's was one of the best guards in the entire league at his peak but just situation in general makes me want to stay away from him for a couple reasons one he was the best guard for many years and he was the best guard for that pittsburgh team pittsburgh is the one that released him 
whenever a team releases a player that was one of the best at their position and has done nothing but good things for them it usually means that that team doesn't necessarily believe they can continue to do that at that level anymore now we don't necessarily need the cash to be the best guard in the league anymore we need him to be a really good guard right and maybe he still has that in him but we saw something similar to this before nate solar was one of the best left tackles in the league for 10 years with the patriots the Patriots then let this man walk. They didn't really even attempt to sign him back, you know, when his second contract was up. Um, and we didn't need Nate Solar to be the best left tackle in the league. We just needed him to be a really good left tackle in the league. And Nate Solar came on, and his first year, he was anything but a really good left tackle in the league. So we've seen this before. Whenever a team that guys have spent their whole careers with, particularly offensive linemen, when offensive linemen spend their whole careers with a team and they do nothing but good things for that team and then they're released, that's usually a problem for me. And that's just my opinion. I know a lot of you may disagree with that. Another reason is there's a lot of rumors going around. The whole reason they released him in the first place was because this man's considering retirement. When it comes to the mindset of a player, I'm not sure if I want to pick up a guy that's considering retirement. Usually that means that they're, you know, they're content with their career. They're content with their life. They want to just, you know, get on, uh, spend more time with their family and whatnot. Or a little bit more of a darker take is that, you know, maybe mentally they're not there anymore and they just want to get the game over with. Or they just think that their body can't take the hits anymore. Whatever the case is, they're really close to being done with the game of football. And mentally speaking, I'm not sure if we could afford the luxury of taking on a guy that's mentally done with football. And the third and probably most important reason for me, at least, is going to be his injury. David DeCastro is coming off an ankle injury, I'm pretty sure. And even though he was released with a non-football injury designation, there's still a chance that something is wrong with his ankle. Something is nagging him with his ankle. And that could be why Pittsburgh released him. Or it could play a factor into why they released him. But remember, that entire Pittsburgh line almost was dealing with injuries. And DeCastro was one of those guys. However, let's not get too ahead of ourselves here, or I should say, let me not get too ahead of myself. If we were to sign this dude to an extremely, extremely cheap contract, and that's another thing. I know the Giants work black magic all offseason. Kevin Abrams, I'm looking at you. I know they work black magic all offseason to literally pull cap out of thin air to sign people. I still don't know how much cap we have left. I don't think I'll ever know how much cap we have left because of just how this offseason went, you know, for the rest of the future. I, I don't know how they work it. I don't know if we got enough to sign him. Um, if we do, then great. If we don't, then great, because they're going to make it anyway. But I would be willing to bring him on for a really, really cheap contract. I'm talking like five mil a year max type cheap contract. Would the, I'm going to have to go and look at what Zach Fulton got. My bad, guys. I should have had that pulled up. Something around Zach Fulton, as crazy as that sounds, but it's because of the factors I listed. But you guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.